Hello, this is Music Tech Explained, the visual approach. Apple just released a minor update for Logic Pro version 10.7.3. In addition to the usual bug fixes, they snuck in a big new feature, an industry first, exclusively now available only on Logic Pro. <laughs> Welcome to Music Tech Explained, the visual approach. My name is Edgar Rothermich, author of the best-selling book series Graphically Enhanced Manuals. In this video, I will explain a few exciting new features and changes in the Logic Pro Update 10.7.3. Although as a dot release it has mainly bug fixes, the Logic team snuck in a few features for mixing Dolby Atmos music that are huge. The ability to monitor your Dolby Atmos mix or any mix with Apple Spatial Audio Renderer, the one that is also used to playback Dolby Atmos songs on Apple Music streaming service. There is also another change in this update that some Logic user might not be so happy about. So keep watching and I will tell you all about it. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified about exciting new videos in my Music Tech Explained YouTube channel. So let's get started. I will cover three topics in this video. First, a look at Logic's new capability on how to monitor your Dolby Atmos mix with Apple's Spatial Audio. Then a look at a brand new plugin, the Spatial Audio Monitoring plugin. And then some head scratching about what happened to Logic's environment window. And here it is, the first big new feature in this 10.7.3 update monitoring your Dolby Atmos mix using Apple's renderer instead of the Dolby renderer. And this is the new and improved monitoring format pop-up menu where you find the four new options. Dolby renderer, Apple renderer, Apple renderer head tracking and render for built-in speakers. This is not only big, it is actually huge because now Logic is the first and only DIW that can monitor a Dolby Atmos mix in real time using Apple's own renderer, its spatial audio technology that is used when playing Dolby Atmos songs on Apple Music. If you are already mixing in Dolby Atmos, no matter what DAW, and you know the current monitoring restrictions, then chances are your heart rate just went up in sheer excitement. What you are looking at in this menu are finally the options to listen to your Dolby Atmos music mix in real time through Apple's Spatial Audio Engine. Any other platform, including the standalone Dolby Atmos Renderer app, requires a rather cumbersome offline workaround by exporting to an MP4 file to accomplish something similar. But Logic took it up a notch and also provides the option to listen to your Dolby Atmos mix using head tracking over headphones or listen to the immersive sound created by your built-in speakers on your supported Apple devices. Just a quick recap on how to get to those options. You have to set your Logic project to Dolby Atmos in the project settings Audio General by selecting it from the Spatial Audio pop-up menu. Please note that the term Spatial Audio here can be misleading because it has nothing to do with Apple's Spatial Audio engine. Think of this parameter as enabling the Logic project to create a 3D audio or immersive audio mix. Once you switched your Logic project to Dolby Atmos, you will see the Dolby Atmos plugin on the Surround Master Channel strip. You click on the plugin to open its plugin window and there is the monitoring format parameter that opens its pop-up menu with all the options on how your object-based Dolby Atmos mix is rendered to the various channel-based speaker and headphone formats. To better understand the magnitude of this implementation, let's rewind and look at the current problem that Logic has solved. First, I launched the previous Logic version 10.7.2. When I open the monitoring format pop-up menu, it has only six options that let you choose how you want to listen to your Dolby Atmos mix. That means how the object-based Dolby Atmos mix should be rendered to a channel-based format. There are five speaker layouts from 2.0, which is stereo, to 5.1 or 7.1, which are the traditional surround formats, up to 5.1.4 and 7.1.4 
which are surround formats with height speakers that deliver a true three-dimensional immersive sound experience. The sixth option on top is binaural, which is the binaural audio format, a specially encoded two-channel audio signal that when listened to over headphones delivers an immersive sound experience that a traditional stereo headphone signal can't do. The magic behind all those various monitoring formats is called a renderer. This is the heart of the Dolby Atmos system that takes the immersive Dolby Atmos mix, the object-based mix, and renders it to a traditional channel-based mix, which means playing it back on a specific number of speaker channels, the ones listed in the monitoring format pop-up menu. This is just a simplified explanation, but you can read all the details in my book Mixing in Dolby Atmos, how it works. Now let's look at the monitoring format pop-up menu in the new 10.7.3 to find out what is the big deal with these new options. There was one big problem regarding the binaural rendering with any Dolby Atmos mixing solution, not only Logic. I will explain that very briefly, but again, all the details are in my book. The renderer as the heart of a Dolby Atmos system is the algorithm that processes the Dolby Atmos mix to convert it to any of the channel-based speaker systems. That renderer is built into Logic Pro and any other Dolby Atmos mixing software to monitor your Dolby Atmos mix. And that same renderer is also built into any consumer device that is capable of playing back Dolby Atmos content. That guarantees that what you hear during the mix is as close as possible to what the consumer later is listening to. However, there was a problem. When Apple introduced Dolby Atmos support for their Apple Music streaming service in May 2021, they decided not to use the Dolby renderer when converting a Dolby Atmos song to a binaural signal when played over headphones. Instead, Apple decided to use their own renderer, their own virtualization algorithm when playing back Dolby Atmos mixed songs. Here's the huge problem with that. Most end users don't have an immersive speaker setup at home. And besides that, an estimated 80% of music nowadays is listened to over headphones. That means most people will listen to a Dolby Atmos mix over headphones. When the mixing engineer, on the other hand, works on the Dolby Atmos mix in the studio, they monitor on the 7.1.4 or higher speaker layout. So the mix is rendered to that speaker format but they also have to check how the Dolby Atmos mix sounds when rendered to a binaural signal to be listened to over headphones. So in Logic 10.7.2, when you selected binaural in the monitoring format, Logic used Dolby's version of the binaural renderer to transform the mix to a binaural headphone mix. But once that song gets uploaded later to the Apple Music streaming service and the end user listens to that Dolby Atmos mix over headphones, then Apple is not using that Dolby Atmos renderer to create the binaural mix, the one that you used to create your mix. Instead, Apple is now using their own renderer, their own virtualization algorithm, also referred to as spatial audio, to convert the Dolby Atmos mix to a binaural headphone mix. There are also other challenges, for example the Dolby codec that Apple is using, called the DD plus chalk, that ignores all the binaural render modes that you set in your mix for each track. Again, I explain all that in my book. So how do you solve that problem? The only solution so far was in the Dolby Atmos renderer application that provides something more like a band-aid. You had to export the Dolby Atmos mix and jump through a couple of hoops to get the audio file onto an iPhone so you can listen through Apple's spatial audio engine. But now Logic Pro 10.7.3 is the first and only solution on the market that fixes that monitoring problem. Let's look at the pop-up menu again to see how that works. The first option is Dolby Renderer. This is the same as when you selected binaural in the previous Logic version. Now Logic is using the binaural renderer from Dolby, the algorithm that is used for headphone playback on any streaming service other than Apple Music. 
Please note that the binaural render section in Logic's Dolby Atmos plugin is only available when this Dolby renderer option is selected. When you select the Apple Renderer option from the menu, Logic is playing back your Dolby Atmos mix using the same spatial audio algorithm that is used on Apple devices to create the headphone virtualization when a Dolby Atmos song is played back on Apple Music. With 10.7.3, this is now the first time that you can actually monitor a Dolby Atmos mix in real time while mixing. No more tedious offline monitoring steps required anymore. With the next option, the Apple Renderer Head Tracking, things are getting even better. Apple's spatial audio technology has the head tracking feature built into the headphone virtualization. If you think this is just a gimmick or only relevant to movies and not music, then you have to dig a little bit deeper into the technology and psychoacoustic aspects of human hearing to understand the true impact of this technology. So far, head tracking required some clumsy add-ons to be clipped onto your headphones, mainly used for gaming devices. But Apple has this technology not only built into many of their earbuds, it is also supported with their software on iPhones, Macs and Apple TV. Keep in mind that you have to select your supported Apple AirPods as the output device in Logic. The fourth option, Renderer for built-in speakers, is placed separately between divider lines because it doesn't belong to the binaural renderer engine above or the dedicated speaker renderer below. It is something special. Apple's spatial audio technology has two components, headphone virtualization and speaker virtualization. That means any audio signal like stereo or conventional surround signal like 5.1 or 7.1 and now also a Dolby Atmos mix can be used as a source and the virtualization creates an immersive sound experience either through headphones or the built-in speakers on newer iPhones, iPads or Apple computers. If you create your Dolby Atmos mix on one of those supported Macs, then you can enable this option in the monitoring format and Logic will play back your Atmos mix using the speaker virtualization of its spatial audio technology. The five speaker options are the same as in the previous Logic version. You select any of the dedicated speaker formats and for that Logic is using the Dolby renderer. All that is super exciting, but it comes with a small little fine print. Remember, when Logic Pro 10.7 was introduced, it required at least Mac OS 11 Big Sur. If you have Mac OS 11, or even if you run Mac OS 12.2, you might notice that three of the four options are grayed out in the pop-up menu, which means you can't select them. These new options are only available if you have updated to the current Mac OS 12.3. There are a couple of conditions that determine if the three new options are available or grayed out. The Apple Renderer options is only available with a minimum of macOS 12.3. The Apple Renderer Head Tracking option is only available with a minimum of macOS 12.3 and you have to have a head tracking device like the AirPods Pro selected as your audio device in Logic Pro. The renderer for built-in speakers option is only available with a minimum of Mac OS 12.3 and if you are on a newer Mac that is capable of playing spatial audio through its speakers. And finally, to wrap up this chapter, let's do a quick audio demonstration. For this, you have to put on your headphones. First, I select the Dolby renderer option as the monitoring format. That means for each track I can now choose from four binaural render modes – Off, Near, Mid and Far. I have a more detailed audio demonstration of those settings in my video What's New in Logic Pro 10.7. Now I play an Apple loop panned all the way to the front right using the Mid setting as the render mode and then toggle between that and the Apple renderer.
As you can hear, the virtualization is quite different. Now imagine you would monitor your Atmos mix using the Dolby renderer and then the song, when played back on Apple Music, could sound quite different regarding the virtualization. Now I choose an even more drastic example. Imagine you decided to set the binaural render mode to off for a specific track. That means there is no virtualization applied and in our example the signal is coming straight out of your right ear. However, Apple Music doesn't know any of those binaural render modes and just applies its virtualization on that signal. Now listen to that difference when I switch back and forth. This was just a quick demonstration, but you hopefully get the idea of the main problem any Dolby Atmos mixing engineer is facing when their mix is played back on Apple Music. The binaural render modes of the original Dolby Atmos mix are ignored and replaced with one specific virtualization algorithm determined by Apple. The good news is that this guesswork is eliminated with Logic Pro 10.7.3 because you can select Apple Renderer in the monitoring format. That specific virtualization algorithm to monitor your mix already during mixing. How cool is that? I also list a couple of links in the description below to my articles on Production Expert about Dolby Atmos and Spatial Audio that has download links to audio files for testing the binaural render modes. The Logic Pro Update 10.7.3 also added a new audio effect plugin, the Spatial Audio Monitoring plugin. Let me show you what that is all about. You can find the new plugin in the Audio Effect plugin menu in the Imaging category submenu. But, and here is the same big but again we encountered with the new monitoring formats in the Dolby Atmos plugin. You need macOS Monterey version 12.3. If not, then you cannot even see the plugin in the menu. First, how does the new plugin look like? Very simple, the plugin window has only a single pop-up menu labeled Monitoring Format which has three options to choose from. Apple Renderer, Apple Renderer Head Tracking and Renderer for built-in speakers. If you think that this looks familiar, then you are right. These are the same three options that are also available in the Monitoring Format of the Dolby Atmos plugin. Good news, they have basically the same functionality. But here is the big difference. The monitoring format is a parameter of the Dolby Atmos plugin that can only be loaded on the surround master channel strip when you are mixing in Dolby Atmos. The new special audio monitoring plugin, on the other hand, can also be loaded on the effects slot of other channel strips, not only the master channel strip. However, the channel strip has to be set to surround. You won't see the plugin in the plugin menu of a mono channel strip or a stereo channel strip. Now Logic can perform the same spatial audio processing that is applied on your Apple devices when you enable spatial audio playing back any non-Atmos surround signal. Be careful with the name spatial audio monitoring because technically you are processing the audio signal on that channel strip. If you bounce with that plugin enabled, you are bouncing with that spatial audio processing applied to that signal. There is actually one unconventional but very convenient use for this plugin when mixing in Dolby Atmos. Assume you are fortunate enough to have a dedicated speaker setup of 7.1.4 in your studio. That means you would set the monitoring format in the Dolby Atmos plugin to 7.1.4. But remember, you still have to check your mix over headphones to listen how it sounds in binaural. Usually you would have to open the Dolby Atmos plugin and toggle the monitoring format from the pop-up menu. But now, instead of that somewhat tedious action, you can load the spatial audio monitoring plugin on the surround master channel strip as the last plugin after the loudness meter plugin and set it to Apple Renderer. 
Now that 7.1.4 signal of your Atmos mix will be rendered to spatial audio depending on what option you selected. To listen to your 7.1.4 dedicated speaker, you just bypass the spatial audio monitoring plugin again. There is one change in the 10.7.3 update that might get some Logic users worried a little bit, especially advanced users. The change is related to Logic's environment. Some users might not even know about its existence, but it is one of those powerful features in Logic that sets it apart from other DAWs. The environment, or MIDI environment as it was renamed not long ago, is a window that lets you customize the MIDI routing in Logic to an extent not possible in any other DAW. It was actually one of the reasons why I switched in 2005 from Cubase to Logic Pro after using Cubase and its predecessor since the mid-80s. Up to Logic Pro 9, the environment window was necessary for some of the functionality when using Logic Pro. But with a major overhaul of Logic Pro 10 in 2013, the environment was moved down to the basement, so to speak, and not necessary anymore for the basic function of Logic. However, many Logic users to this day appreciate and rely on the advanced capabilities of the environment of freely rerouting and processing MIDI signals and creating custom mixer windows. Here is Logic Pro 10.7.2. If you go to the main menu, Window, and scroll down, there is the menu command Open MIDI Environment. That does exactly that. It opens the environment window. That's where you can do all the magic under the hood in Logic. So remember, the Open MIDI Environment menu command below the Open MIDI Transform command. Now let's switch to the new Logic Pro 10.7.3 and open that window menu again. Yes, you are right, the command Open MIDI Environment is gone. Does that mean the environment window has been removed from Logic? Luckily, that is not the case. What seems to happen is that the environment window is not only located deep down in the basement, now in addition, the keys to the basement are hidden. Here's a magic trick on how to make those keys reappear. Hold down the Option key and then click the window menu and voila, there is the command Open MIDI Environment again. By the way, power users never use that menu command anyways, because using the corresponding key command is much faster. It is Command 0. If you open the key commands window, Option K, you can see that this command and the other related key commands are also still there, in addition to all the other key commands in the MIDI environment category that you can use when you have the environment window open and focused. So what does it all mean? Hopefully the developers just wanted to hide any traces of the environment window to keep it out of sight from the average Logic user who might not need those features. Let's cross our fingers that nobody is cleaning out the basement anytime soon. Okay, that sums it up about the Logic Pro Update 10.7.3. For more in-depth explanation of all the new features and changes in the recent 10.7 release, please check out my book Logic Pro – What's New in 10.7 with information and details you won't find anywhere else. All the links are on my website dingdingmusic.com. Don't forget to subscribe and check the bell for notifications about exciting new videos in this Music Tech Explained YouTube channel. In addition, you can read my free Logic and Pro Tools tutorials on my website. And please explore the books in my graphically enhanced manual series. They are available in different formats as PDFs from my website, as iBooks on the Apple Bookstore and Kindle and printed books on Amazon. All the links are available on my website dingdingmusic.com.